Ezekiel chapter 46 This is what the Sovereign Lord says. The gate of the inner court facing east is to be shut on the six working days. But on the Sabbath day and on the day of the new moon it is to be opened. The prince is to enter from the outside through the portico of the gateway and stand by the gatepost. The priests are to sacrifice his burnt offering and his fellowship offerings. He is to bow down in worship at the threshold of the gateway and then go out. But the gate will not be shut until evening. On the Sabbaths and new moons, the people of the land are to worship in the presence of the Lord at the entrance of that gateway. The burnt offering the prince brings to the Lord on the Sabbath day is to be six male lambs and a ram, all without defect. The grain offering given with the ram is to be an ephah, and the grain offering with the lambs is to be as much as he pleases, along with a hin of olive oil for each ephah. On the day of the new moon, he is to offer a young bull, six lambs and a ram, all without defect. He is to provide as a grain offering one ephah with the bull, one ephah with the ram, and with the lambs as much as he wants to give along with a hin of oil for each ephah. When the prince enters, he is to go in through the portico of the gateway, and he is to come out the same way. When the people of the land come before the Lord at the appointed festivals, whoever enters by the north gate to worship is to go out by the south gate, and whoever enters by the south gate is to go out by the north gate. No one is to return through the gate by which they entered, but each is to go out by the opposite gate. The prince is to be among them, going in when they go in and going out when they go out. At the feasts and the appointed festivals, the grain offering is to be an ephah with the bull, an ephah with a ram, and with the lambs as much as he pleases, along with a hin of oil for each ephah. When the prince provides a freewill offering to the Lord, whether a burnt offering or fellowship offerings, the gate facing east is to be opened for him. He shall offer his burnt offering or his fellowship offerings as he does on the Sabbath day. Then he shall go out, and after he has gone out, the gate will be shut. Every day you are to provide a year-old lamb without defect for a burnt offering to the Lord. Morning by morning you shall provide it. You are also to provide with it, morning by morning, a grain offering, consisting of a sixth of an ephah, with a third of a hin of oil to moisten the flour. The presenting of this grain offering to the Lord is a lasting ordinance. So the lamb and the grain offering and the oil shall be provided, morning by morning, for a regular burnt offering. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. If the prince makes a gift from his inheritance to one of his sons, it will also belong to his descendants. It is to be their property by inheritance. If, however, he makes a gift from his inheritance to one of his servants, the servant may keep it until the year of freedom. Then it will revert to the prince. His inheritance belongs to his sons only. It is theirs. The prince must not take any of the inheritance of the people, driving them off their property. He is to give his sons their inheritance out of his own property, so that not one of my people will be separated from their property. Then the man brought me through the entrance at the side of the gate to the sacred rooms facing north, which belonged to the priests, and showed me a place at the western end. He said to me, this is the place where the priests are to cook the guilt offering and the sin offering and bake the grain offering to avoid bringing them into the outer court and consecrating the people. He then brought me to the outer court and led me round to its four corners, and I saw in each corner another court. In the four corners of the outer court were enclosed courts forty cubits long and thirty cubits wide. Each of the courts in the four corners was the same size, Around the inside of each of the four courts was a ledge of stone, 
with places for fire built all around under the ledge. He said to me, These are the kitchens where those who minister at the temple are to cook the sacrifices of the people. Ezekiel chapter 47 The man brought me back to the entrance to the temple, and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple towards the east, for the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. He then brought me out through the north gate, and led me round the outside to the outer gate facing east, and the water was trickling from the south side. As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits, and then led me through the water that was ankle-deep. He measured off another thousand cubits, and led me through water that was knee-deep. He measured off another thousand, and led me through water that was up to the waist. He measured off another thousand. By now it was a river that I could not cross, because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in, a river that no one could cross. He asked me, Son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, This water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into the Araba, where it enters the Dead Sea. When it empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Fishermen will stand along the shore. From En Gedi to En Egleim, there will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the Mediterranean Sea. But the swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. These are the boundaries of the land that you will divide among the twelve tribes of Israel as their inheritance, with two portions for Joseph. You are to divide it equally among them, because I swore with uplifted hand to give it to your ancestors. This land will become your inheritance. This is to be the boundary of the land. On the north side, it will run from the Mediterranean Sea by the Hethlon Road, past Libo Hamath to Zidad. Barotha and Sibriam, which lies on the border between Damascus and Hamath, as far as Hazar Hataikon, which is on the border of Hauran. The boundary will extend from the sea to Hazar Enan, along the northern border of Damascus, with the border of Hamath to the north. This will be the northern boundary. On the east side, the boundary will run between Hauran and Damascus, along the Jordan between Gilead and the land of Israel to the Dead Sea and as far as Tamar. This will be the eastern boundary. On the south side, it will run from Tamar as far as the waters of Meribah Kadesh, then along the Wadi of Egypt to the Mediterranean Sea. This will be the southern boundary. On the west side, the Mediterranean Sea will be the boundary to a point opposite Libo Hamath. This will be the western boundary. You are to distribute this land among yourselves according to the tribes of Israel. You are to allot it as an inheritance for yourselves and for the foreigners residing among you and who have children. You are to consider them as native-born Israelites. Along with you they are to be allotted an inheritance among the tribes of Israel. In whatever tribe a foreigner resides, there you are to give them their inheritance, declares the Sovereign Lord. Ezekiel chapter 48 These are the tribes, listed by name, at the northern frontier. 
Dan will have one portion. It will follow the Hethlon Road to Libo Hamath. Hazar Enan and the northern border of Damascus next to Hamath will be part of its border from the east side to the west side. Asher will have one portion. It will border the territory of Dan from east to west. Naphtali will have one portion. It will border the territory of Asher from east to west. Manasseh will have one portion. It will border the territory of Naphtali from east to west. Ephraim will have one portion. It will border the territory of Manasseh from east to west. Reuben will have one portion. It will border the territory of Ephraim from east to west. Judah will have one portion. It will border the territory of Reuben from east to west. Bordering the territory of Judah from east to west will be the portion you are to present as a special gift. It will be 25,000 cubits wide, and its length from east to west will equal one of the tribal portions. The sanctuary will be in the center of it. The special portion you are to offer to the Lord will be 25,000 cubits long and 10,000 cubits wide. This will be the sacred portion for the priests. It will be 25,000 cubits long on the north side, 10,000 cubits wide on the west side, 10,000 cubits wide on the east side, and 25,000 cubits long on the south side. In the center of it will be the sanctuary of the Lord. This will be for the consecrated priests, the Zadokites, who were faithful in serving me and did not go astray as the Levites did when the Israelites went astray. It will be a special gift to them from the sacred portion of the land, a most holy portion, bordering the territory of the Levites. Alongside the territory of the priests, the Levites will be allotted a portion of land, 25,000 cubits long and 10,000 cubits wide. Its total length will be 25,000 cubits and its width 10,000 cubits. They must not sell or exchange any of it. This is the best of the land, and must not pass into other hands, because it is holy to the Lord. The remaining area, 5,000 cubits wide and 25,000 cubits long, will be for the common use of the city, for houses and for pasture land. The city will be in the center of it, and will have these measurements. The north side, 4,500 cubits. The south side, 4,500 cubits, the east side, 4,500 cubits, and the west side, 4,500 cubits. The pasture land for the city will be 250 cubits on the north, 250 cubits on the south, 250 cubits on the east, and 250 cubits on the west. What remains of the area bordering on the sacred portion and running the length of it, will be 10,000 cubits on the east side and 10,000 cubits on the west side. Its produce will supply food for the workers of the city. The workers from the city who farm it will come from all the tribes of Israel. The entire portion will be a square, 25,000 cubits on each side. As a special gift, you will set aside the sacred portion along with the property of the city. What remains on both sides of the area formed by the sacred portion and the property of the city will belong to the prince. It will extend eastward from the 25,000 cubits of the sacred portion to the eastern border and westward from the 25,000 cubits to the western border. Both these areas running the length of the tribal portions will belong to the prince, and the sacred portion with the temple sanctuary will be in the center of them. So the property of the Levites and the property of the city will lie in the center of the area that belongs to the prince. The area belonging to the prince will lie between the border of Judah and the border of Benjamin. As for the rest of the tribes, Benjamin will have one portion, it will extend from the east side to the west side. Simeon will have one portion. It will border the territory of Benjamin from east to west. 
Issachar will have one portion. It will border the territory of Simeon from east to west. Zebulun will have one portion. It will border the territory of Issachar from east to west. Gad will have one portion. It will border the territory of Zebulun from east to west. The southern boundary of Gad will run south from Tamar to the waters of Meribah Kadesh, then along the wadi of Egypt to the Mediterranean Sea. This is the land you are to allot as an inheritance to the tribes of Israel, and these will be their portions, declares the Sovereign Lord. These will be the exits of the city, beginning on the north side, which is 4,500 cubits long. The gates of the city will be named after the tribes of Israel. The three gates on the north side will be the gate of Reuben, the gate of Judah, and the gate of Levi. On the east side, which is 4,500 cubits long, will be three gates, the gate of Joseph, the gate of Benjamin, and the gate of Dan. On the south side, which measures 4,500 cubits, will be three gates, the gate of Simeon, the gate of Issachar, and the gate of Zebulun. On the west side, which is 4,500 cubits long, will be three gates, the gate of Gad, the gate of Asher, and the gate of Naphtali. The distance all around will be 18,000 cubits. And the name of the city from that time on will be The Lord is There. Jude Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who have been called, who are loved in God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. For certain individuals, whose condemnation was written about long ago, have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only Sovereign and Lord. Though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord at one time delivered His people out of Egypt, but later destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority but abandoned their proper dwelling, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. In the very same way, on the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and heap abuse on celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Yet these people slander whatever they do not understand, and the very things they do understand by instinct, as irrational animals do, will destroy them. Woe to them! They have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's error. They have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. These people are blemishes at your love feasts, eating with you without the slightest qualm, shepherds who feed only themselves. They are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind, autumn trees without fruit and uprooted, twice dead. They are wild waves of the sea, foaming up their shame. Wandering stars, for whom blackest darkness has been reserved for ever. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about them. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all of them of all the ungodly acts they have committed in their ungodliness and of all the defiant words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These people are grumblers and fault-finders. They follow their own evil desires. 
they boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. But, dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, In the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the Spirit. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire. To others show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord, before all ages, now and for evermore. Amen. Psalm 125 Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures for ever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and and for evermore. The scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous, for then the righteous might use their hands to do evil. Lord, do good to those who are good, to those who are upright in heart. But those who turn to crooked ways, the Lord will banish with the evildoers. Peace be on Israel. Proverbs chapter 12 Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. Good people obtain favor from the Lord, but he condemns those who devise wicked schemes. No one can be established through wickedness, but the righteous cannot be uprooted. A wife of noble character is her husband's crown, but a disgraceful wife is like decay in his bones. The plans of the righteous are just, but the advice of the wicked is deceitful. The words of the wicked lie in wait for blood, but the speech of the upright rescues them. The wicked are overthrown and are no more, but the house of the righteous stands firm. A person is praised according to their prudence, and one with a warped mind is despised. Better to be a nobody and yet have a servant than pretend to be somebody and have no food. The righteous care for the needs of their animals, but the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. Those who work their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasies have no sense. The wicked desire the stronghold of evildoers, but the root of the righteous endures. Evildoers are trapped by their sinful talk, and so the innocent escape trouble. From the fruit of their lips people are filled with good things, and the work of their hands bring them reward. The way of fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. Fools show their annoyance at once, but the prudent overlook an insult. An honest witness tells the truth, but a false witness tells lies. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. Deceit is in the hearts of those who plot evil, but those who promote peace have joy. No harm overtakes the righteous, but the wicked have their fill of trouble. The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. The prudent keep their knowledge to themselves, but a fool's heart blurts out folly. Diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in forced labor.
Anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. The lazy do not roast any game, but the diligent feed on the riches of the hunt. In the way of righteousness there is life. Along that path is immortality. <laughs>